hello welcome to success mandra i hope you are enjoying listening to me and now I, i must tell you one thing again if you take an interest to listen what i'm talking to you and if you put little effort to apply in your life it does make a big change little effort little discipline creates a greater output for your life so welcome to success mandra today i want to talk to you about the family life when we talk about the family life is the most important thing that is nobody who is here without a family and the people who grew up without a family they have so much of problems in in insecurity inferiority complex and they really don't know how to get along with the people and how to live with other people in harmony and they face various kinds of problems in their life and a very unhappy life family life starts with the marriage marriage is one of the oldest institution in the world and it's an integral part of a life marriage is for life and it's important you need to have a character that will stand in the marriage if your character is not good you will never be able to make a proper commitment the first foundation of a strong ba- family is that you as an individual need to develop a strong character within yourself when i counsel people about the marriage i always tell the lady if you treat your man as a king then he will treat you as a queen and marriage can make you or break you some people married and then their life become miserable some people married then their life become great the marriage has tremendous power to make great change in your life so the family life is very important we all have a great desire to have to be a part of a family we all want to have a sense of belonging we all want to be loved and we all wanted to love now when we talk about family life family life is all about sharing giving and tolerating one another with a good heart in order to have a good family life it is important for you to have a proper understanding about you who you are what you are what kind of thinking pattern you have how you respond to different kind of situation i want to share with you today about certain kind of character that you need to develop in order to to build a sustainable strong family life so number one is that when you think about yourself you need to have a very realistic thinking about yourself about who you are and what you are is your thinking about you is real or it's unreal if you see your you see yourself as you really are without fantasy dreams and wild imagination you are aware of your strength and weakness you are learning to recognize your blind spots and accept criticism constructively that's called realism when you are realistic you are able to see yourself as you are with your weakness and your strength and you will be able to handle different kind of circumstances without getting emotional and uh, you think about yourself without any wild imagination and fantasy there are lots of people have a very unrealistic thinking about themselves when i have an unrealistic thinking about myself that's the time i get disappointed with myself you think you can do certain things and you start doing it and then you realize no i can't do such things i'm not capable of you think you can become like your neighbor and you try to do then you realize you can't i hear people say you know man is all about positive thinking we can do anything we wanted we can work hard we can become anything that we wanted and it's all about positive thinking no god no nothing it's just think positive and it will happen it's good to think positive but negative thinking also have a power you know why do you lock your car when you go out of the car 
Don't you think it's because of negative thinking? Why do you lock your house when you get out of the house? Or you see, I can do everything by positive thing. Oh, well, right enough. Can you play like Sachin Tendulkar? Can you go and hit a century in the cricket and come? You can't. We all are made, we all are wired differently. We can't do everything. Your positive thinking is not going to make you capable of doing everything. You have to have a realistic thinking about yourself. So the number one ingredient in order to build a solid, good character that will stand in the family life is you must have a realistic thinking about yourself. Let me read it from my notes. Uh, realism means you see yourself as you really are, without fantasy, dreams and wild imagination. You are aware of your strength and weakness. You are learning to recognize your blind spots and accept criticism constructively. Man, in order to do that, you need to have some thinking. You need to put on your thinking cap on you. Don't think, don't take things in life for granted. Don't assume things that's there. Lots of things are not there in your life. You need to develop that. When you operate on assuming, you land up as a failure. So, number one in order to build a good, good character that will stand in your family life is that you need to be realistic about yourself. Who you are. What you are. What you can or what you cannot. Once you come to that, when somebody criticizes you, you will take it positively. Or somebody show your blind spot, the things that you cannot see but all others can see, you will accept them. How can you get a realistic thinking? Simple. Spend some time alone with yourself. You must spend time alone. We call it meditation, self-reflection, soul searching. You call it whatever you want. Some people call it prayer. I don't mind what you call it. But it's all about discovering yourself. It's all about trying to understand who you are and what you are and what you can and what you can't. Sit somewhere alone, take a book and write about yourself. If you can't face yourself, then nobody else is going to face you. If you can't enjoy the company of yourself, then nobody else is going to enjoy your company as well. So, number one, have a realistic thinking about yourself. That can be developed only by spending time with yourself. The second one is being flexible with your life. So flexibility is that you're able to adjust to different circumstances without getting upset or depressed. Remember the covenant you made when you get married for better or for the worse, for the poorer or for the richer. So that's the covenant you made. So flexibility means you are flexible with your life. Some people act like a stick. They'll say I have only one policy, only one style. You like, you can. If you don't like, I don't care. Some people say, I don't care what you think, I will be what I wanted. You fool. You become a fool at the end. You should know when to stand firm and when to be lenient. You should learn to understand the situation. When a opposition comes in your family or when something you done it was wrong and criticism you face, how you handle that situation determines whether you're going to have a good family or bad family. You as a person in the family, whether you're a mother or father or children, whoever you are, your uncle, whatever you are, you must become flexible with the people. At the end of the day, what do we all want? We all want to be loved and we all want to love somebody. I want to tell you a story about a family. One husband and wife, they were arguing, fighting, and they walk into a garden. They sat on a bench, and opposite to them was another couple sitting, very romantic. They were hugging each other and kissing and holding hands and 
So the wife, turned, the wife turned to the husband and said, Why are you not doing that? The husband said, Ready, I don't even know that woman. Sometime you are not ready to change, yet you want all the good things to happening with you in your partner. It doesn't happen. Most of the marriages get into a big fight. Most of the family have an unpleasant situation because they have so much of an expectation on their partner and they are not ready to change. In the marriage, you don't try to change your partner, you change yourself. In your family life, more than you want to change your children, you change yourself. Remember, we face more failure in life than success. We fail in many, many aspects. Nobody can be always successful. It's, it's not so important what happened to you as a failure. It, it is very important what you did with it after. It's not important what happened. It does matter how you respond to it. In life, we face different kind of situation, good and bad. You must be able to be flexible with it without getting depressed or discouraged. Sometimes you face very, uh, very bad criticism. People criticize you. You don't have to be depressed about it. Nobody is, not everybody is going to accept you as you are always. You'll always have a group of people saying that you're a good person and another group of people says you're a bad person. You can never get total acceptance or you can never have a total rejection. You become a failure only when you say, I'm a failure. You start going down only when you are depressed and discouraged. But when the various kinds of difficult situation comes of failure and, and uh, discouragement and, uh, and accusation and criticism or nagging, these things will never bring you down. These things will take you up. So you as a person, in order to have an effective family around you, you must be flexible with people. You must be able to be in a situation of various kinds of emotion without getting discouraged or depressed. You know, be tolerant with one another. Be flexible. Don't be so stiff-necked when it comes to your family. Some people are like that. They would take all the trouble in the world. They go to the workplace. They are treated badly every day. They will take all the garbage from their workplace. They take all the garbage from their friends. But when it comes to family, they never take anything. If the wife says something back, he gets so angry. The children doesn't listen. He beat them. He, he, he abused them. But do you see them in the public place? They are so good. They are so polite. They have a problem. They don't know themselves. They have a character problem. So in order to build an effective family, you as a person of the family, you must be flexible. You must be able to adjust to different kinds of situation without getting depressed or discouraged. Remember, good and bad things come every day. But you don't have to change. You can remain the same. So third thing that you, you have to develop is a self-control. You know how to handle your emotions such as jealousy, anger, fear, etc. You know, self-control means you are not easily become moody or quickly discouraged. We all are very good in trying to control others without trying to control ourselves. We all have fantastic idea of how other person should behave. The only person that you can change, that's you. You know, most of the time, marriages has problem. The family become unhappy because everyone want to change each other. There was one couple, they were, they were having so much a marriage problem. And they went to a counselor. And counselor said, you must read some good books about married life and how to be a good husband, how to be a good wife. They said, that's a good idea. They both went out. The wife went and bought a book about what are the signs of a good husband, how to be a good husband. 
and the husband went and and bought a book uh, saying how to be a good wife who is a good wife they both are reading the book husband is reading book on how to be a good what's the sign of the good wife and the wife is reading the book on what are the signs of a good husband every page they read is you are not doing it you are not doing it they keep criticizing that doesn't change so the third ingredient in order to build a good character for your family life is that you need to develop self control smart people spend 80% of the time in developing themselves and 20% of the time to develop others i like one statement jesus said to his disciples he said whatever you want others to do for you you do it for them that's a fulfillment of the law and the prophet so whatever you expect from your partner you do it for your partner whatever you expect from your children you do it for them when you don't have a self control you can never control other people so third thing is to develop a self control develop self control don't don't worry about controlling your wife let her be whatever she want don't worry about controlling your husband let him be whatever he want control yourself when it comes to children don't be too busy in telling them what not to do be busy in telling them what to do and what they can do there is no point me telling somebody don't do that that's wrong without showing what to do and what's right i have a father who's smoking cigarette like a chimney every day in and day night how no right to tell his child don't smoke a, a mother and father who drinks every day how no right to tell the children you can't drink do what you want to see in others if you don't want your child to not to learn the bad habit you stop them now lots of marriages has problem because of that lots of family doesn't talk to one another because if they talk they will land up in argument some husband says i can't talk to my wife because if i talk to her i will get angry some wife says i can't talk to that man he is silly i can't talk to him i'm living with him for the sake of my children if i talk to him i may lose my temper they live in the fear of the monster within them can i say one thing you got to face that monster one day why don't you face it now the more you delay the more bigger and the larger your monster become in a successful family life what is important is that people has learned self control they need to learn how to restrain themselves when to talk and when not to talk don't give the remote control of your life of emotions into other people life don't allow don't allow other people to decide when you should be happy and when you should be sad you should decide that so develop a self control don't allow other people to control you the fourth quality is that you need to develop in your family life is faithfulness we have to be faithful to one another and you have to learn to keep your word even in small things such as punctuality remembering appointment fulfill the promises you make to your partner or your children in a in a family life you can build up your children effectively by being a sincere and a faithful person if you are unfaithful your partner also going to be unfaithful very soon your children are going to be all the more unfaithful to you in the days to come and sometimes we do wrong and we hide and we think our children don't know don't make a fool of yourself your children are far more smarter than you they can read every word of they can understand everything be faithful to your family in case you make a mistake accept it instead of being confronted about your mistake go up to them and tell them i made a mistake i'm sorry about it i'm sure they may get angry they may shout they may scream they may say i'm getting out of your life and 
They say, Dad, we never expect you to do that. Let them say everything they want. And you say, I am sorry. The word sorry can be said only by smart people. People who know themselves. People who are confident in themselves. They are the only one who can say the word sorry. Fearful people. People of insecurity. And a weak people, they can never say sorry because they are frightened. If I say sorry, that makes me a, sm a small person. If I say sorry, that will make me small. But I want to correct you today. If you say sorry, that makes you great. If I make some big blunders, everybody is coming against me saying that you done wrong. Like they are coming to bite my head off. I say, I'm sorry. I'll tell you, you defuse, you, you release air from the balloon. It goes, it goes down. Saying sorry doesn't mean you are not good. Saying sorry means I'm good, but I made a mistake. I'm going to correct it again. Even in case you made a mistake, that doesn't mean you got to walk away from the situation. Say sorry and stay on the course. Even in your marriage, you make mistake again and again and again. Don't worry, keep on making, keep on saying sorry till the day you come to a stage where you change. I'm sure you will change one day. I remember counseling one couple. The lady always said to this man, you never change, you never change. I told you, told this lady, lady, as long as you are saying that kind of statement to him, he's not going to change. She refused to change her language. One day he never changed, he went after another woman. The words that you speak to one another has power. So never say the words like you will never change. I know you won't trust me. I know you don't like me. Don't say such things. Even if you know, you still tell them, I know you love me. Your mind is saying, no, he doesn't like you. No, I know he loves me. Even if they make a mistake repeatedly, you say, I appreciate the effort you're trying to change, you're putting to change. I appreciate the efforts you're putting to change. I appreciate you're so much working to make a change in your life. I appreciate you. Though you made mistake, you're still doing so well. In order to build an effective family around you, always find things to say good about one another. When the bad and the ugly and the angry stuff gets filled in your mind, close your eyes, rub your hand, fingers, or hold on something, or maybe go to some empty place and scream, or maybe go to sleep, but don't say it. Do anything, but make sure don't say anything negative. Be faithful to one another. If they show your mistake, they say, yeah, we know you, you did this. We know you are not so good. Yeah, it's true. Can you pray for me that I will change? Can you help me? Can you help me that I will change? I know I'm wrong. I know I must change in that. That's my weakness. Can you help me to change? If you develop such kind of attitude, people are going to love you for that. People are going to love you for that. Be faithful. When you're wrong, accept it. When you're right, stand like a rock for them. Be faithful to one another. In case you made a mistake, talk about it to one another. If your wife been unfaithful to your husband, find a comfortable, convenient place and time and talk to him. It's better that he hear from you than you hear from somebody else. Husband, if you are not being faithful to your wife, talk to her. If you're a man who's getting very tempted or getting lots of lustful thoughts all the time, talk to your family. I have a problem. I was traveling with man, one man the other day. Every girl passes by, he goes like this. 
Then he was trying to act as if he's not looking. And I had to talk to him. It's true that some men are more lustful than others. It's true that we all have different kind of energy levels in all of us. Some people are very passionate. Some people are dull. But if you develop a godliness in your marriage, in your family life, where you talk to one another things, your family understands you. And by openly speaking about your weakness, the power of your weakness over your personality get weakened. But when you hide your weakness, it's like feeding a monster within you. The fifth quality is called godliness. Godliness, maintain a sanctity in your married life. There is a famous Catholic saying, a family that pray together, stay together. Family who come together in a prayer, discuss things and talk to each other and pray for one another, they do stay together. So develop a godliness. So today I was talking to you, sharing with you about how to build a strong family. I'll recap it again. Your family, it all depends on your character. All of us love to have a good family around us. A good family boosts you up with a great level of energy to do big things. A good family will boost you up. A good family will encourage you. Good family will work as a dynamo within you to create energy to achieve great heights. So in order to build a good family, you need to develop a good character within you. How can I develop a good character? Number one, have a realistic thinking about yourself. How do I develop a realistic thinking? The second thing is be a flexible person. Don't say that I will be the way I want it. You will make a fool of yourself. Be flexible, learn to adjust to various kinds of situations. When somebody criticizes you, accept it constructively. Don't feel depressed because they criticize you. And when people show you your blind spot, the thing that's wrong in your life, learn to accept them and say, yeah, it's wrong. I'll, I'll work on it or say, that's my problem. The third is that learn to develop self-control within yourself. When you get good and bad news or good and bad and the ugly news, learn to handle them constructively. Don't act according to what happens around you. Learn to act according to what you wanted to become or what you wanted to make happening around you. The fourth is that develop a faithfulness in your thinking, in your attitude towards your wife or towards your husband or towards your children and develop a godliness in your family. Maintain a sanity in your marriage. Family is the most important unit. A good family will build you up. It gives you strength. But in order to build a good family, you need to develop a good character within you. In order to have a good character, you need to have a realistic thinking about yourself. You need to be flexible. You need to be faithful. You need to develop self-control. And you need to have a godliness. Thank you for listening. So love, family, stinking, thinking. Get rid of the stinking, thinking how the love and the family stay together. A family start, a man fall in love with a woman, a woman fall in love with a man. Then it gets into marriage, a family. But if you develop a stinking thinking, it stinks. It doesn't work. Cut off the stinking thinking by developing a good character. Thank you. God bless you.